Welcome to the Owatonna Today Show, your community connection since 1991. I'm Linda Karnowskis, and I want to thank you for joining us on this Wednesday, October 19th. We have a very informative show for you today. The first uh, part of the program, we'll be visiting with the incumbent, Vicki Jensen, for the Minnesota Senate, District 24. And then later on in the program, we'll be uh, interviewing and visiting with John Jasinski, who is the uh, in, uh, candidate for the uh, 24th District Minnesota Senate. So uh, we hope you'll stay tuned. Oatana Today welcomes your suggestions on show topics and guests. You can do so by contacting us via email at oatanatoday at charter.net or by calling our show's producer, Leanne Alt, at 390-5751. Leanne would love to hear from you. We will take a short break to hear a word from our sponsors, and then we'll be right back with Vicki Jensen, the incumbent for District 24. So please stay with us. Hi, I'm Dr. Beth Giltvet. And I'm Dr. Nick Vincelli of Horizon Eye Care. We want you to see what you love and love how you see. We're proud sponsors of the Owatonna Today Show. I needed more than just another dead-end job. I wanted a career, so I expressed myself. With the kids off to college, I decided it was time for me to go back to work and express myself. Express got me in touch with some really great companies. Now, I'm on my way to a great career. Express Employment Professionals is in contact with thousands of companies in need of quality employees. Come in now and get the job you deserve. Express yourself today. United Way of Steel County has kicked off the 2016 campaign. This year's corporate campaign leader is Go for Sport. Our goal is $700,000. Be part of the change you want to see in the community. Give, advocate, volunteer, live united. Welcome back to the Oatana Today Show, your community connection. And we're here visiting with Vicki Jensen, who's the incumbent for the Minnesota State Senate District 24. Welcome again to the program, Vicki. Thank you. Great to see you again. Yeah, it's always good to have you and busy time of year for you. <laughs> Especially this year, <laughs> that is correct. So you have business and business. That's very true. <laughs> Tell us about yourself, Vicki, to our viewers who sure. may not know you. Years in community, uh, job positions, volunteerism. Thank you, and thanks for the opportunity to get a chance to talk to folks on your, through your program. Um, I always tell people I start out first and foremost, wife, mother, um, now grandmother, brand new grandbaby born, two weeks old. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty exciting uh -huh. around our house with that. But um, I am a small business owner, and um, my husband and I own that business together. So some of the things that I do revolve around that. Um, did a lot of work through the local chamber of commerce and served on the public policy chair for chamber, the local chamber. Um, I served on the school board, and so I have some experience in understanding the challenges that rural schools face. Um, I was, held some state positions for uh, Minnesota business women, and also do a lot of advocacy through the farm organizations, farm, farmers union um, policy work through that. Okay, good. How many years have you been uh, in? I was elected in 2012, okay. so I've served four years. And I just, I have to tell you, I can't um, forget the pride I felt and how proud I was when I was elected to represent this district. Oh, great. Thank you. Why did you decide uh, to run again for office, and what qualifications do you feel you bring to this elected office? Well, when I look back at the things that I've done, I've always had an interest in local community and serving on those um, committees and trying to find solutions for challenges that we face locally. Um, when I decided four years ago, I, I wanted to take that to the next level. And once I got there, I realized um, how much good I could do, um, how much um, impact I could have at that level. And through those successes and accomplishments, I would love to go back and continue doing that work and making sure that everyone in this district is represented at the state. Okay. What do you feel are several important issues facing 
the state and the district. Yeah. Well, I have always been a proponent that go state government should absolutely do the education, educate our kids, infrastructure, make sure that our transportation system is modern and upkept and, and well run. And then um, the things that keep us safe, making sure the people that keep us safe have the resources that they need and some of the things in statute to protect people. But I know that beyond that then, I've, as an insurance agent, that's what our business is, I understand the challenges on health care and have been working for the four years that I've been up there to find some of the solutions to try to reduce the cost, reduce the premiums, but also make sure our local hospitals can stay open and that people have access to the doctor that they, that they want to go to. So I have carried lots of bills on that and um, hopefully I want to go back so that now at a point where it's really reaching a crisis that we can make sure we get those things done. Yeah, you had just said that you've been in office four years, so my mm -hmm. next question to you would be, what are some of your accomplishments since taking office? Well, I have done a lot of work, like I said, in education, um, bringing some funding to our rural schools and making that more equitable was one of the big things that I did for our rural schools, and then bringing some opportunities that there seems to be some gaps not in academic, but in opportunities. Um, just because some of the things in career and technical are very expensive and being able to put into place some private public partnerships. So it's not like we're putting a lot of money into it, but we're opening and looking outside the box at maybe public private partnerships. And I've been able to pass something called IT Academies that does that. Um, things like that, I, especially um, when it comes to secondary, pipeline, earn while you learn, those are things we put into place that I worked on a lot. And then Railroad Safety Act, keeping us safe, making sure we have inspectors on the rail, and some other things like um, getting um, benefits for families of firefighters that die in the line of duty. So I have been fortunate to really want to learn about an issue do my homework and work really hard to make things happen. So I, if you go out to my website, vickijensen.com, I have listed out there the 200 bills that I've carried in the four years that I've been in office. Okay. Would you say the public-private uh, partnership, is that where the, the public uh, candidates such as yourself or, or sitting, uh, right. sitting senator would go out and try to get an interest group involved um, to also fund it? Well, and that... That's what I'm talking about, okay. where I pass something called IT Academies, where an outside company um, can okay. provide the curriculum, and so that the district isn't trying to create curriculum, but train the teachers, and they actually provide the um, packets even um, for the kids to utilize. I think um, we can do those things if, if we think outside the okay. box a little bit. Just wanted the viewers to understand yeah. what that public-private yeah. uh, really means. Tell our, um, what is your... Uh, what is your long-term vision for the district or the state? Well, <laughs> oh gosh, I think we need to make sure that we get our infrastructure money and Highway 14, those kinds of projects. I've been able to get over $300 million into um, something called Corridors of Commerce. I'm really proud of that work because it was gridlocked. And so I had an opportunity to see how effective I could be in that situation. And we were able to get that passed. And that included um, $75 million for right-of-way purchasing for Highway 14 and the money, $12 million to finish the three miles that's left out there. I want to go back and make sure the transparency of our project selection process um, is also in place. So we need to fund our transportation, but if we don't fix how they pick the projects, we'll have those roads like Highway 14 um, still remaining all over the state. So that's a priority a priority of mine, and of course this health care situation. I'd love to extend the open enrollment period when we get there so that um, we can figure out a solution for folks for this year. Okay. Uh, when you talk about um, those issues, you know, what you would uh, uh -huh. accomplish or what's your long-term vision, what is just one or two other issues outside of that that the district or state that you're aware of is having that you feel would be a priority? Well, we, we have to look at economic development for our rural communities, and I have received awards from the Coalition of Greater Minnesota Cities for Legislator of Distinction on Economic Development. I will continue that work, and it includes things, not just attracting businesses um, to the community, um, but making sure that professionals like doctors and teachers want to come and serve here. And then we've got to look at affordable housing, workforce development. I've been able to get um, some money to um, ab um, apply for GED when okay. you when you go for um, making sure that we make sure that people have the training that they need when they get out of high school and they're not in college. That group um, 
need some um, resources as well. Okay. As you're campaigning and yes. different things uh, around right now, what are you hearing or some of the, uh, the voters, what are some of their concerns? Well, for, for the district <laughs> that you can talk about. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I, I hold my second Saturday with your senator events. I've held 48 now, the second Saturday of every month. Mm -hmm. And so I've been talking to voters for the entire time. Mm -hmm. So I know this health care issue has been um, a growing problem and, and a real health care crisis. And I know that um, education is really important to people to make sure that they feel like their kids are getting the opportunities that they, they should be getting mm -hmm. within their school district. Um, so there, there are a lot of things um, that, that I do here, but it's it's not an angry conversation. Okay. It's concern, and, and that's what I, what I try to do, is meet people where they're at and bring them to the table and make sure that their voice is heard, whether they're facing a personal issue or if there's some way that the state can help out and understand those challenges. Um, those are the conversations that I'm having. Okay. My final question would be for you today. Yeah. You can expound on this if you'd like. Sure. Um, what would, our, what would you like our viewing audience to know as far as why they should vote for you? Right. Well, I have a record of getting things done um, and working with others on policy issues and letting everyone have a seat at the table. And that's the important part because I represent everyone in the district and everyone in the district deserves that opportunity to have their voice heard. And it's not just uh, me saying that. There are several organizations that have endorsed me, including the Minnesota Chamber Leadership Fund, the National Federation of Independent Businesses, and labor organizations too, AFL, CIO, um, SEIU, AFSME, um, um, Education Minnesota, the care providers. Um, I have a long list, the um, Minnesota Police and Peace Officers Association for the work I've done on public safety when it comes to our families. Um, I have a passion for rural policy and the outcomes to to you in your home, where you, in your work, when it comes to your kids, and I just ask for your vote so that I can go back and continue to work hard for our rural families, communities, our Main Street businesses, our family farms, and for those things that keep us safe. So you definitely have a passion. Yes, I do. <laughs> for <laughs> as, you're, as you're going on. Well, thank you for sharing. We yes. wish you continued success and luck with the, with the election. Well, thank you. It's good to see you again. Yeah, yeah thanks. Yeah. We will take a quick break to hear a word from our sponsors, and then we'll be right back with the uh, candidate, uh, John Jasinski. So please stay with us. Hi, I'm Jason Earhart, and I play Captain Braidbeard. And I'm Shelby Zempel, and I play Swill in LTO's current production of How I Became a Pirate and Little Mermaid and the Prince, directed by Vedette Ostermeyer and sponsored by Federated Insurance. Performances will be held Friday and Saturday, October 21st and 22nd at 7.30 p.m., with a matinee on Sunday, October 23rd at 2 p.m. And again the following Friday and Saturday, October 28th and 29th at 7.30 p.m., and Sunday, October 30th at 2 p.m. Tickets are available at the LTO box office by calling 451-0764 or online at littletheaterofowatonna.org. Don't miss LTO's production of How I Became a Pirate and The Little Mermaid and the Prince. Hi, Brad here from Owatonna Senior Place. Our goal at Senior Place is to involve, enrich, and empower adults 50 years of age or better to live as independently as possible in our communities. We do this by promoting wellness through recreational, educational, and social opportunities, as well as being a referral source for services available within our area. Activities and programming at our center emphasize creating and maintaining independence in all phases of life. Come see what Senior Place has to offer. Live full, live well, and live long. Amy Swain Hearing Centers is a proud sponsor of the Owatonna Today Show. I'm Dr. Amy Swain, and I want everyone to hear better. I'm Dan Branstead of Carlson Branstead & Company, certified public accountants. We support the Owatonna Today Show. At Triumph Graphics, we think beyond ink. That's why you should make us your source for creative concept, design, print, mail, and web. Check us out today at triumphgraphics.com. Hello, my name is Katie Marshall. A year ago, my family and I became homeless. We were scared and alone. 
Today, with the help of Steele County Transitional Housing and generous donors like you, my family and I are safely housed. I am working, going to college, paying my rent on time. My children have a warm bed to sleep in every night. My family and I are so grateful for this second chance. Please help others in need by donating to Transitional Housing today. Everyone deserves a safe place to live. Cedar Valley Services, located at the corner of Rose and Grove in Owatonna, provides an array of services for people with disabilities in Steele County. CVS thanks the entire community, especially our business customers, for supporting us in Owatonna for 43 years. Thank you from CVS. Welcome back to the Owatonna Today Show. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought you were stopping me, I'm sorry. Welcome back to the Owatonna Today Show, your community connection. Well, we want to welcome to the program John Jasinski, who is running, uh, is the candidate running for the uh, Minnesota Senate, District 24. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Well, it's a busy election year. It so has we'll, been busy. <laughs> so we'll get right to the questions, and you can inform those who are interested in sure. finding out more about you. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, John, tell us about yourself, your years in the community, uh, your job positions, volunteerism? Sure. Uh, well, I was born and raised in Fairwell, Minnesota, just uh, north of Otana, about you know 16 miles. I've uh, been there all my life with the exception of about uh, four years that I was in the military. Uh, came back to Fairbow in about 1990 after I got out of the military. I uh, used my GI Bill, went to school at Mankato State, uh, pursued a degree in business finance with a concentration in real estate. Been involved in real estate for 23 years in Faribault. Uh, got involved on the city council, or actually first the planning commission and then the city council in Faribault. And basically I've been on the city council or a board or commission or the mayor for the last 23 years in Faribault. I've also been involved with the uh, Beyond the Yellow Ribbon in Faribault, uh, the uh, Economic Development Authority, the uh, Industrial Corporation, several other, other uh, entities in Faribault. Uh, my family's in Faribault. I have two great kids. One's 17 years old and one's 15 year old. Um, one goes to the high school and he's a three sport athlete, Sam, and plays football, basketball, and baseball. And my daughter, JC, is a sophomore at Bethlehem Academy and she's a big volleyball player, so she's excited about that. Um, you know, we've been in the community for you know, all our lives. Uh, actually, my great-grandfather was originally from Otana, uh, which is interesting for people there. Uh, they used to live on Le Mans Road, and they raised 13 children on a farm of 309 acres. And uh, back in 1929, when my dad was born, they moved to Faribault. So we've been in Faribault all our lives. All my five siblings and my mother's in Faribault. And, uh, you know, been involved in the community forever. Uh, love Faribault, love the district. And uh, the more I get out uh, from outside of Faribault and seeing Waseca and Otana, the more I've uh, met a lot of great people. So it's exciting. Well, good. Uh, why did you decide to run for office and what qualifications do you feel you bring to this elected position? You know, uh, they actually called me from the Senate, uh, from the uh, leadership team, and uh, said that they had been looking for a candidate in District 24, and my name kept coming up, I think, from my economic development stuff in Faribault and, and working with businesses and things like that. So I thought about it with my family, and, and you know, it was going to be a busy thing, so I wanted to make sure my kids were okay with it, and we discussed it for a couple months and thought that this was the right time. Uh, there's a lot of things as a mayor you can't do. Uh, there's you know, only so, so many things you can do. And one of the things I was involved with with business over the years is uh, businesses and people and, and watching the state get uh, not as competitive as they should be. The taxes are getting higher and higher, and I've been seeing the exodus out of the state from both businesses and people that are leaving the state because of our tax structure. So I thought this was a good timing to do that and, and to try and make a change and try and make a Minnesota more competitive and use my experience as a mayor, which I think is a good background for a Senate position because you know how a city works and you know what the people's concerns are. So basically just wrapping that up and kind of continuing on with a progression of in, in politics of what I thought would help the area. You had mentioned leadership had called you. Uh, could you expound on the leadership portion? Uh, uh, there's a leadership committee at the Capitol uh, from the Republican Party that's looking okay. for candidates and just kind of connects with those people and sees if they're interested and kind of walks them through the process and they came through and, and talked with me and discussed what it would be like and, and want to know my feelings on certain things. So we, we met a couple times and and uh, they thought I'd be a good candidate for the, the district. Uh, they thought the values were uh, along with what's the district. So I, I uh, thought about that and you know, said okay. it was good timing. Okay, thank you. Why, what do you feel are several important issues facing your district state? 
Uh, you know, again, it goes back to the back to the taxes. I think our tax structure in Minnesota has gotten very high. I think Minnesota is the third highest tax state. Um, our, our corporate uh, base, both the indirect taxes and the direct taxes, but from property taxes to income taxes to corporate taxes, all those things have gotten higher and higher in Minnesota. And it's tough to see people leaving Minnesota to go somewhere else or not expanding in Minnesota because the tax structure isn't isn't good enough for them. So. I think that's the major thing. Um, that and just, you know, I want to give my kids, I've seen things change and, you know, the way I was raised and the, the opportunities that I had as a, as a kid. I don't see my kids having that opportunity anymore because things have been changing. Uh, I think over the years, you know, the way I was raised is, is you work hard and, and you accumulate things and you, the more you do, the better you can, you know, the more you, harder you work, the better things you can do. And I've seen that change over the years. There's more of an entitlement attitude and, and all these programs. So I think to try and get in and try and make Minnesota more competitive and work that, th that way would be better. So I thought I would do the, step up and, and try and make that change. Yeah. Could you talk about what, what you mean by the entitlement program? With well, I just, you know, I think you need to work for things. You, there's always seems to be a lot of, um, oh, just people are looking for a, a handout, something like that now, instead of working hard for your money and, and trying to make a good living and doing those things. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, is that something you think the youth of today we need to instill more? or I think we need to instill kids to get involved and uh, take uh, responsibility for their actions and, and work hard and, and try and make a, a, live, a good living and earn a good wage and want to work. Okay. What, do you, uh, what do you hope to accomplish in office? <laughs> well, again, it goes back. I, I want to see Minnesota become more competitive. Uh, I want to use my uh, experience in both business and uh, in my uh, background as a mayor to try and make things better in the state, uh, give a new, you know, new voice of, of what people are looking for out there. And I think uh, people are excited about me to run from the background I've had in Faribault, uh, someone like myself to run with the, that background in business and background as a mayor. Uh, so, you know, I want to make the change. What is um, some? What is the, your long-term vision that you see for the district in the state? Uh, I'd like to see us become more competitive, see more is industry grow here uh, and stay here. Um, I'd like to see our roads and bridges improve so we have a better connection to both Mankato and Rochester and Otana and, and all throughout the community. Uh, I'd like to see our health care, something improved on that. I think, you know, obviously in the most recent weeks here, you've seen health care and some concerns over health care in the state of Minnesota, so I want to see that improved. I don't have a lot of background from that field, but that's something that I, when I'm knocking on doors, that's the big thing I hear is really a big concern over health care. Um, there was a discussion over the, you know, the, the in, individual programs being dropped, and, and those are the people in outstate Minnesota, the small business owners, the small little accountants and things like that are losing their health care because of, of Minsure. So I think that's a big concern. It's probably the biggest one I see that's facing the district and the state. So I want to work on, you know, work on that. Um, and just, you know, make more Minnesota more competitive and see more corporate businesses locate here. Yeah. You said you're knocking on doors, which is, uh, <laughs> what, what's the pulse of the people? What are you, what are you, what are you seeing that they, what are they telling you or what's your vibe, what's your, um, uh, your again, interpretation goes, of what you're learning from the, them? The big thing is the health care, uh, the roads and bridges, um, uh, the gridlock at the state, not getting things done, I think is a big thing, seeing things not happening at the Capitol that they should, you know, this, you know, special sessions and things like that they want, you know, if they're going to pay people to be here and, and elected as office, they want to see things get done in a timely manner. So I think those are the big three things that I've seen. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes during elections, there's, you know, some events are well attended, some not. Are you seeing the people coming out more uh, for some of these things, wanting answers or? Uh, yes and no. You know, I think what's going on at a national level has, has affected people a lot. There's just so much stuff out there in the media, and I think people are a little bit overwhelmed. Um, and it's mostly because of the national level, not the state level. I think people are good receptive to us, the, you know, the local candidates. I think there's some frustration at the national level because of the media and all the things that are going on and, and the topics they're bringing up versus the issues. I mean, you know, the, the things that have happened in years past and things like that, I think it's about the concerns of what's going on in our nation and in our state is, should be what it is at, and it mm -hmm. seems to not be. It's something else. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think it's the most uh, bi polarized that I've ever seen it. Uh, I'm more involved now, but I just see the country in, in such a different, you know, from both sides are so polarized, uh, so I'd like to see that get closer together and see us work as a state and as a nation to, to make America better. Okay, great. Well, we're to our last question of the day, so you can expound on this if you'd like. Uh, what is your, or tell our viewing audience why they should vote for you? <laughs> 
Well, I, I think I have the experience uh, from the, as a mayor level, I think that's, you know, it's a grassroots, you're right down talking to people that you're seeing in a grocery store or at the post office or things like that. I think my business background, uh, working on economic development, bringing industry to, this, to the city and the district, I think is important to see what, what kind of the pulse of business is and the people. Um, I want to work to make it better. Um, I think I'm a very approachable person. I've been told that in Faribault that I'm, you know, I'm out and about, I'm at all the, all the events and things like that. You can come up and talk to me and uh, tell me your concerns. So I think I'm really engaged in the community. Uh, so I want to be engaged in the district as well as I was in Faribault as a mayor and, and continue that experience out into the, the full district. The people I've met in Otana and Wasika have been phenomenal. So it's really <laughs> neat to meet those people. And I'm excited about that. And uh, you know, I have an, uh, just as a you know, chance to, to have another alternative. And I think I'm a good choice. I think I fit the, the district well. Okay, great. Well, we wish you well in the election. Thank you for taking out the time and to educate our viewers. We appreciate it. Thank you. We will take a quick break to hear a word from our sponsors, and then we'll be right back. So please stay with us. Hi, I'm Bev Cashman. I'm running for the House of Representatives in District 24A. Good government works when all legislators agree to listen to each other, to work together, and compromise to serve the best interests of their constituents. I will do that. As a legislator, my goal will be to help resolve difficult issues rather than simply blame the other party for failing to act. Please vote for me, Bev Cashman, on November 8th. Welcome back to the Owatonna Today Show, your community connection. It is now time for our community announcements. Uh, Associated Church, uh, the Associated will host its annual harvest dinner on Sunday, October 23rd from 5 until 7 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall at Associated Church. The menu for the dinner includes pit ham sandwiches, salad, potatoes, or chips, pie, and beverages. Tickets are $10 for adults and $5 for children under 10. Tickets can be purchased at the door or before the church at or before the event at the church office. A portion of the proceeds from the event go to support Mission Ministries projects of Associated Church. A public information night is scheduled for Monday, October 24th, 6 p.m. at the Oatana Masonic Lodge, 311 South Oak Avenue. Our lodge will be open to men in the area who are interested in meeting the Masons and Shriners to ask questions and learn about our outstanding fraternal organizations. Little Theater of Oatana presents The Little Mermaid and the Prince and How I Became a, Pri uh, a Pirate. October 21st, 22nd, 28th, and 29th are at 7.30 p.m. And there's also performances October, October 23rd and 30th at 2 p.m. matinees. Open House to Celebrate Free Clinic of Steele County's new facility. Uh, 134 Southview Street, Oatana, Minnesota, 55060. Thursday, October 20th from 4 to 6 p.m. A ribbon cutting will take place, plus light refreshments will be served. Third annual Trick or Treat Trail, Saturday, October 29th, 2 to 4 p.m., Manatee Park. Ghosts and goblins of all ages, grab your Trick or Treat bags and head out to Manatee Park for our third annual Trick or Treat. Uh, fourth annual Swap and Tank event um, is coming, and that will be October 29th. Well, we want to thank you for joining us today. Please join us on Friday when our guests are, will be on location with the Shock Red Ribbon Week at the Owatonna High School. And then we'll also be on location at the Owatonna Public Library to hear from Mary Kay Feltis. Until then, have a, a great day and we will see you on Friday. <music>